Pick a card. Your villain era is told by your rivals. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and pause if you need more time. Hi friends, my name is Griselle with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do your reading. This is my first channel. As you guys know, I did open up a second channel. It is called Tough Doll Tarot. I'll link it in the description box below. I do have a August 2024 giveaway, even though these guys are timeless. You can check the community tabs on both channels where I'm giving away a free reading to a lucky winner. Moving on. Pile number one, you chose this image on the right-hand side of your screen. Your villain era is told by your rivals. In this image, she is staring over her shoulder intently. It's almost a little bit defiant. There's a very youthful feeling about it as well. Of course, you have that great, beautiful porcelain skin. Incredibly enviable. I'm looking at her makeup. It is on point. Incredible makeup. You could be somebody that enjoys makeup tutorials, or this is simply stating that your villain era is told by your rivals is that you hide behind makeup, that you put on too much makeup, something about your makeup, maybe perhaps even that your makeup is not appropriate for the age that you currently are. And keep in mind, these are their opinions. They are rival opinions as well. So don't put too much merit or too much heart behind that. Pile number one, your villain era is told by your rivals. Let's find out what's going on. Tree, letting them go. Yeah. So you are the villain. According to your rivals, because you let them go, because you burned that bridge, you burned the tree. With the tree, this even can potentially talk about family tree, right? We've got the number 18. With the one, I feel like you are pulling back your energy and you are going within in order to perhaps think of your family lineage, perhaps rewrite history in a way. And this narrative is told by your rivals is that you simply don't care that you burned the bridge and that you went on your merry way, that you're acting immaturely, that you're dressing inappropriately, that um, you simply have no heart and that you don't care. Again, this is from your villain's perspective or the person that really feels like is you know, they're your villain. I don't feel like even in all three piles energetically, it's not even feeling like you're calling them a, vill a, a rival, like they're your rival. I don't feel like that's it at all. I do believe that this is coming from their perspective. Pile number one, we have the 22 right here with the library. Take control of your own narrative. And we have a puppeteer. So it's very interesting to me. And I, ha I had a feeling this was going to come out. So your villain era has been experienced by you is simply embodying you, pulling away and snipping the strings that were controlling you initially. I feel like, yes, this could be family members. This could be friends. This could be coworkers, old uh, bosses, things like that. And I feel like they are pissed because they no longer control you. They can't make you dance anymore. They can't even write a script for you to follow because you're doing your own thing. And that, by the way, is why you are a villain today, according to your rivals. Pile number one, I feel like with this stack of books right here, and it talks about control of your own narrative. Um, according to your rivals, you are rewriting things, that you are miswriting things, that you are um, misinforming things. And I feel like they are very similar to the fact checkers, right, that we've been experiencing only when it comes to topics that, that are worthy of exploration, right, that you can't take at face value. And it's interesting to me because my personal opinion of these fact checkers, you probably know if you've been on this channel at all, is that they're bought out and it's full of BS. It is a third party that comes in and bends the script according to what it is that they want the narrative to be. In a similar fashion, I feel like your rival is actually the one who is projecting. I feel like they are trying to rewrite a script that they wrote it initially in order to control you. And now that they're being exposed, they're pissed off and they're saying, no, you're the one that rewrote the script. That is incorrect, et cetera, et cetera. The interesting part is that I feel like you're not even messing with that anymore. 
Also another interesting thing to mention in this beautiful gold quartz, I do see like a double holding on to a globe that's similar to this. This person can be getting readings on you, by the way. And I did see it was like a double holding a fortune telling thing, um, a globe, a crystal. And so I feel like your villain is your era. Your villain era is told by your rivals. Your rival is basically trying to get the inside scoop, trying to get readings on you, trying to bend the narrative in order to really have them regain control over something that they once upon a time controlled. With the number 22, this is a master number. That could be a very skillful manipulator, very skillful navigator. Um, somebody who naturally has the ability to figure out where the strings are and they constantly pull them, not only just for you, but for people around them. Now, what I feel like they don't understand is that by launching on this big thing, by maybe writing paper about you or um, trying to expose you or trying to tell anyone who will lend an ear any longer is, you know, that you are really their rival, that you're the villain, that you did all of these things. And they're making up a pretty little dance in order to get people on their side. What they don't understand is that they're exposing themselves to be your rival by their choice, that they pitted themselves and squared up with you and basically got into the boxing ring and decided that this was going to be a match of all matches and may the best man win is what I'm hearing. Pile number one, my throat chakra kind of got like roughly, <laughs> roughly, it got croaky right there. So I'm just going to say that this person could be talking a lot of ish and having problems with their throat chakra. They could be coughing. I feel smoking. I feel even a lot of drinking with this, these tails. And I feel like also other people feel controlled by them as well. So they well realize that this narrative is exploitive, that it is subjective, that it is um, designed with an end game insight. And I feel like people around them no longer want any part of listening to this story. Honestly, and frankly, I'm kind of tired of it too. It's been coming up quite a bit. So pile number one, your villain era. I feel like you're just exploring your freedom. You're thinking about, wow, you know, this has been my legacy forever. And all of a sudden I freed myself from something corrupt and something controlling from someone that just wanted to possess and really control my life. Now what do I do with myself? I feel like you're undergoing, pardon me, a period of mourning of sadness for what was and really starting to understand even these, I mean, even the flames and on top of this tree feels like fingers to me, almost reversed, you know? And this has given me a little bit of as above, so below kind of a thing. And I feel like right now you are about to see and witness spiritual retribution. And I don't feel like that is your focus at all. Um, not at all. I feel like you are just processing and mourning and thinking about things and really experiencing freedom for the very first time. Maybe perhaps this can also include instances where you have freshly moved out of home or maybe off to college or you're on a new adventure, um, as a full grown, like adult or emancipated adult, whatever you want to call it. Let's see what else we get for you. Your villain era as told by your rivals. Yeah. So your rival is saying that you are the devil, that you lack loyalty with the puppy right here, that you're obsessive. And with these little bat wings enclosed almost, I feel like um, your rival is basically stating that you cannot control yourself, that you're out of control, that you have, again, no loyalty, no loyalty to anyone. If you're willing to burn down the family tree, that you have lost sight and lost your mind in the long run. Pile number one, if you're liking these kind of readings, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. Also, your villain era, you could be dressing a little bit differently. You could maybe put on some extra pounds, lost some extra pounds. And I definitely feel like pile number one, your villain era is told by your rivals is that your rival is definitely expressing this freely, openly, and maliciously. But you know, that's, that's all on them. No worries. So your villain era is told by your rivals. Pile number one is definitely that you, look at the contrast here. I feel like these people blow hot and cold. They love you. They hate you. They want to be close to you. They want to burn you with a stake, that kind of a thing. 
So they're very conflicted. They don't even know their own minds. They are of double mind. And I feel like even though they want to villainize you, they realize that you've done it to pursue freedom, to pursue happiness, to pursue your journey with spirit, that you're doing things your own way. And they can't help but admire your level of purity, your dedication to spirit, the way that you are glowing up. And also with the moon, how your intuition is on point every time, all the time. This person can actually be going to the library to utilize a computer um, or to gain more information or even the Akashic Records. They could be trying to see what they can do about you being the villain and about taming that narrative. They don't like that you are fully embodying your power and that you are strictly focused on your own narrative and your own life. What else do we have? The sword. Make the change. Pile number one, this tells me that you have long looked in the mirror and taken responsibility. You've allowed people to control you, perhaps. You've allowed a fa family dynamic, a family tree, a tradition, uh, the way that things have always been done kind of a narrative to really have over... Um, to really serve to emasculate you, to serve to really guide your life. And I feel like you've cut yourself free from all of that. You've looked in the mirror and decided, you know, it. it's my fault that I felt controlled. It's my fault that whatever. So I think that you have allowed yourself to take that full responsibility and you're cutting off anything that hinders, including the things about yourself. Maybe you wanted that approval. Maybe you wanted to be seen as the good one. Maybe you wanted to make that person happy or people happy and proud. And the only way that they could be happy and proud is if you were towing the line, doing things according to what they say. Pile one, homework. Take yourself out on a date. And I feel like that's part of your villain story. And it's interesting. You're such the villain. Pile number one, let me say. Your rival is basically stating that you are at peace, that you are focused on nature, that you are focused on yourself, on self-care, on maybe loving the things that you have always hated before about yourself. Like your gentle heart, like your desire for peace, like you want to avoid confrontation and hate and hate speech. And I heard arrogance at all costs. So... Whatever it is, your pursuit of happiness is going to look different, pile number one. But I feel like you're definitely focused on self-care, on healing, on healing past trauma. You're also a generational curse breaker, right? And because of that, you're being villainized. And pile number one, I feel like you're aware of it and you are fine with that as well. I feel like you are very grounded and people that see you, know you, or understand you or come within the vicinity of friends and people that are really close to you on a heart level are aware that you care about nothing but growth, but peace, that you um, you welcome anything that comes in peace as well to you. But you're not about the crazy life and the manipulation and keeping other people's secrets. You're just not doing it any longer. Mm -hmm. Evil queen, you deserve sugar, not salt. I love this card. So this tells me, pal number one, that you've been duped perhaps that you have been breadcrumbed, you've been sugar crumbed by people who wanted to control you. This could be a repeating pattern in your life that you have identified. And therefore you sever ties, you sever ties to anyone that controls, manipulates. And this could be another example of a coworker saying, you do that so much better than I do. Um, when they really just don't wanna do that one task. And they're trying to build you up in order for you to take the initiative and go, oh, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about that. Like every time. So that's just an idea for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be. But I feel like you are very sensitive to energy. I'm getting a lot of uh, like pressure on the left side of my head. So I feel like these are messages. I feel like you feel energy in real time. Um, it could be, you could be an empath for sure. You could absorb energy. But I feel like... In this villain era, you are actually, I heard being cursed out, but take the messages as you will. Keep in mind, this is from somebody undergoing their own toxicity and they need to face their own values in their own life right now. Um, yeah, I lost a train of thought. But uh, 
what I'm hearing is that you are the evil queen, that you're the one giving salt when people require or want sugar cubes from you. I mean, try making your coffee with some salt. Go ahead and do it. It's not going to go well. And this person is saying that you are an evil queen. You might even have a tie to pile number three, by the way, only if you feel led. Pile number one. If you like these kind of readings, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. Once again, go check out my other channel, the Tarot Doll Tarot, for more readings. Any last messages for pile number one, please? Yeah, you're finding your balance. And justice right here, what is coming for you is justice. Spiritual retribution, spiritual prison for other people. But I feel like if things are not quite balanced, if it's not... Um, equitable energy, then you don't want it. You're not going to expend your energy. You're not going to entertain anything that's out of balance. I feel like that has been your story and your narrative for a lifetime that you've accepted things that have been unequal, unequitable, and unfair. And that is no longer something that you are welcoming into your home, spiritual home, or into your life at all. With the justice, I feel like spirit is saying, hold my beer. I got this. <laughs> And they're taking care of matters. But I feel like you're not even focused on the other side of things. Your villain era is that you are enjoying all things that are balanced, all things that are calming, all things that are grounding. That you are busy growing and glowing up and busy changing. That you are allowing things to come to you in its natural order. And that you're no longer forcing things. That you are snipping strings that have no need to be attached to you that you're doing cord cutting and that you're embracing your personal power in order for you like the number two being echoed here to be balanced and to be more tempered those are the messages we have for you much love to you until next time namaste hi friends my name is grisal with psychic md and i'm here to do your pick a card Pile number two. Welcome, welcome. You chose this lovely picture on the right-hand side of your screen. It appears to be a woman that is looking towards her left. I feel like evaluating the past, looking towards the left, very beautiful skin as well. Pretty gothic, loving that. Love the ink as well. Face tattoo. I'm not one to judge. Maybe a little jelly. Your villain era is told by your rivals. I feel like this has to do with the way that you are introspective and you are focused on maybe deconstructing your past, learning from it in order for you to gain messages and evolve and grow from there. I'm feeling like hermit vibes, basically. But we'll see what comes through for you. Pile number two. Raindrops. Take a chance on them. Take a chance on me. Okay. That's cool. And oh, bitch fire. <laughs> Hilarious. So we have the fire and the water going on here. There could be said, um, your villain era is told by your rivals is that whatever you are currently doing is nothing but steam, nothing but smoke, nothing but a... Um, deterrent in order to gain attention, to gain clout, to gain control over the narrative. Now, I'm getting that because we have the rain and then we have the fire right here. But the raindrops, take a chance on them. I feel like pile number two, this could be romantic, this could be platonic, regardless. I feel like this is people who want attention. They want you to give them attention. They are... Um, yeah, they're saying, well, look at me. I can actually provide an umbrella for you. It's raining. Don't you see how I take care of you kind of a thing? And this could be even familial, parental, siblings, cousins. It doesn't really make a difference. I feel like with the bitch fire, stand up for yourself. I feel like this is somebody who considers you to be a pushover. Um, has told you to your face that you're a pushover. This could be an ex-best friend. This sounds and feels more like a friend of me to me. But we'll see where this goes. Your villain era. 
Stand up for yourself. This person could have told you, well, I'm sick of you not standing up for yourself, not speaking up, not speaking out. What do you expect? Then it's your fault. And everything is your fault. And you're in your villain era now. The Ten of Swords. This is someone that you had an abrupt and shocking ending with. Feel like with her looking over her shoulder, this is echoing similar to the image that you chose for pile number two. I'm going to say that you underwent a lot of harsh words from this person. This person can be like a Queen of Swords reverse, just careless with her words, not caring where or how her words land or his words land. It does, we don't read sex, we read energy. Um, they want to say what they want to say and they make no bones about that. Pile number two, I feel like this was more of a friend, frenemy kind of a situation. And I feel like for a lot of ways, um, they controlled a lot of how you felt about yourself. And maybe that's why we have all these swords right here. And for whatever reason, um, yeah, I feel like they were inspired by your magic, but also frustrated with you. And in a lot of ways, they want to kind of reach in and do things in their own way in your life. Like they saw potential, but then had no patience with you. And I feel like pal number two, with all of these swords right now, I just feel like you got fed up. You went into self-protective mode. This person was saying, I'm protecting you. I'm showing you the way. I'm showing you how to stand up for yourself. But really, they were just abusing you verbally. Because with the swords, this is like verbal, right? Verbal abuse. I feel like they are basically, um, as told by your rivals, is that they offered you shelter. They offered you protection. They offered you warmth and friendship. And um, that they were really giving. That they wanted to move you into the future and help you to speak up for yourself. But they're not saying is how they went behind your back and said really nasty things about you. How you were a pushover. How you never stand up for yourself. How if you're not going to say what you need. Um, then you deserve what you're getting, basically. This person is painting things in such a way as that they are the victim when, in fact, they, I, her disgrace, I feel like they disgraced your friendship or your connection some way, somehow. And they want to recoup that. They're feeling that loss. They're feeling, first of all, let's get clear, they're feeling a loss of power, okay? And I just got to hear it from one of my dogs, so... I only have one dog, actually. Um, so maybe there could be something in there about having some drinks, hair on the dog, or um, really medicating on something, whatever that something is. As you know, and I've said on this channel before, for me, no drugs, sex, rock and roll, so I might as well, what? Have some pizza. <laughs> Yeah, that's been my advice. Okay, don't judge me. So maybe this person is similar of fashion. Now, the narrative, um, your villain era is told by this person is that you are all about yourself. Now, now you choose to speak your truth. When they were the ones that taught you, they were the ones that gave you the tools, the skills, the self-esteem, that they were backing you up and that you are ungrateful, that you are the one that totally betrayed them and ended something monumental with the fire in her hair right here. I feel like they themselves are really upset and kind of known to be a BIT. They're known to be a bitch, but I'm just going to say that your villain era is told by your rivals is that you have turned into a massive bitch, especially since you cut them out. Since you place boundaries in your life that you're no longer accepting words of condemnation, condensation, <laughs> condensing words, right? I'm sure that condensation words would be interesting as well. But Word on the street is three of swords. Yeah, that you broke their heart, that they never thought that you would have acted like that. Um, with the three of swords right here, yeah, that you stabbed them in the heart, stabbed them in the back, that you ended this connection. And all they ever wanted was the best for you. And that's a story that they're telling themselves. Now, pile number two, I feel like this person lacks an ability to go within themselves and really be honest. And I feel like this has happened over and over again. I feel like their words caused a lot of losses in their lives. Their words have actually caused people to withdraw and end things with them as well. You are not the first. In pile number two, you will not be the last, most certainly. Your villain era as told by your rivals. Let's get a little bit of more information here. If you're liking this kind of reading, do give me that like, share, comment, subscribe. 
let's see what's going on. The Nine of Coins. Your villain era. Oh, yeah. That you are living the life of luxury that they helped you get to. That without them, you would not be where you currently at. You would not be this abundant. You would not be this wise. You would not have people handing over things to you in order to get into your space. Um, you would not have discovered the carnucopia, that they really helped your character to grow. They helped you professionally. And pile number two, I'm not saying that this is not true, but what they want to focus on is how they benefited you and ignoring what they actually did to cause a rift or a breakup or a shakeup, right? That's a point to this. And pile number two, I feel like that thought gives them a headache. The Seven of Swords. Yeah, I feel like you took back your energy. What they want to talk about is that you are the lone wolf, that you decided to do things all on your own, that you are no longer including them, especially after they were there for you. They were your ride and die. Um, that is according to this person. Keep in mind, we're reading according to your rival's narrative, right? I feel like a lot of things for them. To me, all of a sudden, this feels like that wish... Um, the dandelion when it blooms right it's got those little wish seedlings and they're beautiful and i feel like it's frozen in time i feel like this person could be frozen in time they could be thinking they want to go back in time back when you were um, influenced by their narrative back during the time when you were close but a lot of things you ignored about the connection in order to maintain that closeness and that is no longer an option yeah, this almost seems like a tray, like somebody's handing over a tray and another hand is picking it up. Um, and tray, huh? Like B tray. But this person wants to give you something. And it's almost like, well, do you, do you not remember when I was there for you? But I feel like it is mutual. And again, this is a villain. Uh, your villain era is told by your rivals. So the thing is, even here, like a ship, like you're not allowing anyone to see you exactly what it is that you're doing, that you are closed off, that you closed off the support that you once had, um, that you were very ungrateful to be standing on your own two feet and to be able to do things on your own as you see fit. Your villain era. The emperor, yeah. That you have full control over your life, that you are loving the lap of luxury, that you have stability, that you are really enjoying all of the proceeds that they had a part in as well. So somehow, some way they're taking credit for you, for what you're doing, for your abundance, and that you're basking in that warmth and giving no one else credit when they damn well um, deserve that credit because they were there for you. That is what the narrative is saying. And once again, they're ignoring, you know, they're like, oh, slip of the tongue. Well, you know, that's how I talk, but I don't mean things that way. And I think you just got fed up. Now, once upon a time, this actually happened to me and, um, I had a friend uh, you know, go off on me again for the upteenth time. And I think she called me a bitch or I don't know what it was. And I just got tired of it. And I ended that friendship. So it could be something similar. I've never called her anything, never called her a B word, never, you know, but if that's the route you want to take and you're our poison and not for me. Mm -hmm. So the five of coins came out and this indicates the lack mentality. This person could be like with a white rose. Okay, I realize that we're out in the Alps together. Um, would you like to make up? Do you want, you know, I miss your friendship, that kind of a thing. But I feel like you're done with that. You're done with the harsh words. You're done with the frenemy situation. And you're not going to fall back within it. The thing is, if people want to grow and learn and evolve, it's going to be entirely up to them. And I feel like if you allow this place, this person back in your space, it would eventually revert back to the same old thing. Because they've established a pattern and an ability to make things okay with their words that really isn't okay. So this is somebody who's comfortable verbally abusing you, degrading you, emasculating you, regardless. This could be metaphoric. But they're, they'll dress you down. End of story. 
if they feel the need. The hangman, yeah. I feel like this person might be in spiritual jail so that they can have a different perspective on things, to re really be able to look at things differently, to really regain a part of themselves that they have lost. And I feel like that part is empathy towards other people and not having to be a control freak. Pile number two. Show me what I need to see. Four pile two. Your villain era is told by your rivals. The page of cups. Yeah, this person wants to come back with an apology. And I see, like, with a page, it's too little too late. It's a small apology. Um, they want to be like, well, you know how it is. Let's reminisce with all the pink right here. It's given me quite a bit of like the six of cups narrative. And if that's something that you want in your life, that's fine. But keep in mind, this is coming on their side. Bitch fire, stand up for yourself. And that feels very different from this, this gentle apology. Like I'm really contrite. Um, I miss you. Let's have a friendship again. I apologize. And if time has gone by, I've learned my lesson, that kind of a thing. Um, yeah, and if you're good with that, that's great. Pile number two, I just feel like you don't have a lot of time for toxicity in your life. And as I'm looking at the camera, I saw 1404. So with the fours, that gives me another nod to the emperor about how you're making your life very streamlined, very concrete, very grounded. How you are taking control of the narrative as maybe you were once told. Um... And you're taking control of your life, that how you were told to do, speak up for yourself, speak out. And here you are doing it, but they never thought in a million years that you would be speaking out and speaking up about them. Pile number two, it's interesting because I'm going to have to take a drink here. One moment, please. Before I open up this reading, let's see if we can get the glare off these cards here. Darn it. Before I began this reading, um, I heard the song. It was uh, Gwen Stefani. I heard you were talking shit, but you didn't think that I would hear it. So that song has been referenced right here. And it's quite interesting because I feel like this person has said a lot of things. They have triangulated you as the villain and as your rival. Uh, but not taking any responsibility for their harsh words. And uh, yeah, so I feel like that's where they're at. And you know, if that's what they want, they can do whatever they got to do. One more card for pile number two, your villain era. Mm -hmm, the tower. Your villain era is that you are causing towers, okay? The narrative that they're saying is that you're causing towers left and right. Because this is your villain era as told by your rivals, is that you are causing chaos, that you're causing mayhem, that you don't care who you hurt anymore, that you are quite unlike yourself. Perhaps you have lost your mental faculties. Maybe, even maybe, you have lost control of your mouth, right? And you've come to imitate this person who spoke against you in such a harsh manner. And that now you have no filter over yourself any longer. So what's being said about you is that you cause towers, that you burn houses down, that you simply do not care anymore. And they're not really sure what this means, if they can ever recoup, regroup, or maintain even a friendship or make a comeback. And that's going to be entirely up to you guys. Pile number two. That's what I have for you. Until next time, namaste. Hi, pile number three. My name is Griselle with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do your pick a card reading. We're exploring your vi villain era as told by your rivals, and you chose this beautiful image on the right hand side of your screen that gorgeous queen. Okay. Now, that queen is standing in the middle of snow. So I think I removed the background on one of the images, but she's got snow all over and the terrain is not friendly. I feel like in your villain era, the story and the narrative is that you are in a cold place, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. This could be even physically. Maybe you live on a cold land 
or it is cold during the time that you are watching this video in your neck of the woods, wherever it is that you happen to live. Let's find out a little bit more about your villain era is told by your rivals. Pile three. Escapist, come home to yourself and flower. Be honest with yourself. She's so cute. So your villain era, this could be saying that you are living a life of fantasy, that you are not quite yourself, that you are a little bit like um, in Playland. And I'm all of a sudden in my head looking at Goldilocks and then I'm watching Little Red Riding Hood walk down that um, the path through the woods in order to get to grandma's house only to encounter a fake believe grandma who's laying in bed and wait for her as all, we all know by now is the big bad wolf. Be honest with yourself and escape it. So it could be that you have escaped something that's very toxic, but whatever it is, they're not liking what it is that they see. Your rivals are unhappy because things are blooming because you are growing with all these antennas out. The hair, I liken them to antennas in the spiritual realm. And I feel like maybe you have a lot of connections, a lot of connectivity, and also a lot of receptivity to spirit. I feel like wherever you're at, you are all of a sudden blooming and grounding and sharing. And perhaps you're stating things that are putting people on edge. Perhaps people are shocked for some of you, a few, just keep in mind these are general. If you want a private reading, my Etsy store is open in the description box below. You'll find the information. For some of you, you could be pregnant or birthing something forward, birthing something forward that is quite shocking to other people around you, but is very much in tune with your truth. I feel like people are listening to this and feeling that it's 100% true. Maybe you're even shocked that you're speaking your truth. Maybe you're somebody who has been repressed, suppressed, and compressed. <laughs> Maybe perhaps part of this rival enjoyed your lack of ability to communicate. Maybe they were somebody who held your throat chakra in check, how you couldn't speak about this or that because it's... I'm here an unconstitutional to do so. Where that came from, I don't know. Maybe this has to do with politics. I don't know. But I'm just going to say that wherever it is that you are at, I feel like you are standing tall, standing pretty, really in tune with spirit, and you are acting from the heart, um, and your speech is definitely spirit-filled, and people are uncomfortable with that. Also, there could be an issue with you... Um, escaping okay so your villain era is that you escaped your responsibilities your duties that you escaped the situation that um you are really committed to or that you said you were going to follow through with and you did not you went about your own merry way in order to discover more magic more peace and just take care of you and that you're selfish what else ten of coins yep yeah, this could be family throwing shade your way or blatantly talking-ish about you. The Ten of Coins right here is prosperity. This is loyalty. This is integrity. This is generations coming together, whether it is familial by blood or family by choice, whatever your, your thing is. I'm just going to say that people are upset. Yeah, Ace of Swords, chaos. So that goes in tune with this card right here. Word on the street, according to rivals, is that you've hit your villain era and you're all about you. You're all about being messy. You're all about stating whatever comes to your mind. You don't care who it hurts, how it hurts, how it hits. And it is hitting differently. Pile number three. The news about the, the word about the on the street as told by your rivals is that yes, you're in your villain era, that you think you are bigger and better than what you are, that if you were in the same room with your rivals, you would not be saying those things. You would be more subdued, more self-contained, and more contrite for sure. Ten of Wands. And pile number three, I feel like that's part of what caused this villain era of yours. If you want to, it was a catalyst, okay? You were carrying other people's burdens. It was heavy. It was exhausting. It was painful. And yet no one came to your rescue. No one came to help. No one came to lend a hand. And just one day you decided, you know what? I'm good. 
I'm good. Not only am I good, but I'm done. And you decided to take care of your own business instead. Pile number three, what do we have for thee? Your villain era is told by your rivals. More information, please. You hear my puppy snoring in the back? My senior pup. We have the fool that you took a chance. Take a chance on me. I don't know why that song always comes ahead to my mind. Oh, music. Okay, music makes me lose control. <laughs> Who is that lady? Um, somebody McCarthy. And it was with... Uh, Justin Bateman I think it's called identity theft that was so funny but I feel like her like she's just all crazy going into these songs and she makes no sense at all. <laughs> anyways pardon me here we go clean it up G the fool with pan okay and this is about never wanting to grow up living in la la land so the narrative can be that maybe you want to live your life in fairy tale land in fairy land yeah that kind of a thing um, that, that you've withdrawn from society and things that matter, that you're doing things your own way to live a fairy tale dream. We have the threads of fate going on here, three of coins. And we have this lady with the third eye. This is the maiden, the crown. I always forget one. Oh, goodness. The maiden, the crown, and what? Put it in the chat if you feel led to. They all have the three eye thing going on here. But this is about cooperative energy, collaborative energy. I do feel like pile number three, you are a seer, you are a speaker, you are a, um, I feel like you are a dream maker because you are able to pursue and follow your dreams while escaping the big bad wolf, while trying out all three beds as Goldilocks did and the three little bears and becoming part of the family. I feel like you make the impossible possible by your great manifestation abilities. And that is ringing through true and true regardless of what your rivals are saying. And they have all eyes on me. I hear one, two, three, all eyes on me. Yep, the chariot. And this is also alluding to like in the Kabbalah. Um, the seat to the soul. The tree of life. This is how you make your moves. You have an ability to connect with spirit and make your moves in order for the best outcome possible. Not just for you, but I feel like you had escaped some level of toxicity right there, right? With all of these like snip snip, all of these threads of fate being held in the hands. I feel like this is even stating, you know what, I can snip your fate, that kind of a thing. And as I did that, I'm looking at my ring and observing the little seeds in there. I feel like you give seeds of inspiration and of um, love and of drive for other people to do what you have done in a similar fashion to pursue their dreams, to pursue um, who they really are, their most authentic self in order for them to be achieving their highest good right i feel like you help people to see that it's not just a dream it was just a dream tell me that i don't i'm not like that lady that mccarthy lady oh my gosh what is her name that comedian she's a bigger girl i could see her going biggie 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 <laughs> wait can't you see sometimes your words just hypnotize me oh yeah something like that um, I see actually up in the treetops. Wow, Fred, what are you doing all the way, all the way up there? So this little squirrel has gotten on the very top of the treetop. I don't usually see. Oh, don't do that. He jumped and he's safe. But anyways, I've never seen this in real life, only on TV. So it's actually really pretty cool. I'm just going to say that even with that, um, you climbed to the very top of your tree, wherever it is that you were once upon a time. And you took a, a view of the land and you're like, this is my life. This is what's going on. I don't like it. And you jumped. I feel like you jumped onto a new tree, a new timeline, new trajectory, a new portal. And your life looks very different right now. I feel like you are filled with peace. I feel like your heart chakra is warming up. It is glowing. I feel like you, again, are shocked by what it is that you are saying. And even at times you could feel like the villain in your own story. Hello. Hello again. Synchronicity. Divine soul matches have amazing moments of synchronicities. 
openness. Be open to receiving divine guidance in relationships. And I feel like you are. I feel like you've traveled far and wide. And I feel like this even, um, you could even have tried microdosing. That could be a thing for you. No judgment here. Um, but I'm going to say that your world looks very different, that you are able to see once again the magic that you saw as a child that was stolen away, that was given away, all the things, right? Because we have the power to be able to take that back or not allow it to happen. Now, hmm, interesting. Pile number three, what I'm seeing also as I gaze out into the forest, my other favorite method of divination is I've got these like branches crossing each other and they're pretty barren. There's not a lot of leaves on them. And I feel like they initially look like a spider about to fall. And I think that you have that ability to really find the spiders, right? In your life and to be able to clip their cords to you. Maybe you're into cord cutting. Maybe you're into really um, combining with spirit and showing other people in your world just through um, your own actions. I heard saving your own ass. So it could be, and keep in mind, this is a story as told by your rivals, okay? So don't be offended, please. This is only uh, people's opinion about you. And people's opinion about us can be really harsh. But I'm just saying that you are forming your own story, um, storybook life. And I think it's quite beautiful. I think it's whimsical. It's dreamy. It's fun. Um, and I think your personality is a little bit like, oops, did I say that? That kind of a thing, but it works for you. Yeah. And it can cause confusion in your rival's mind because once again, they haven't gone within to do the work. Unfortunately, all seekers of truth will experience confusion. Ask the universe to provide the answers you need. And I feel like that's where you're at. You have been asking and the universe has been answering and you've been trusting and your style of doing it is it appears erratic and it appears um, kind of wild, but really it is the best way for you to navigate and create this movement and make changes into a different timeline. That really helps you ascend, helps you grow, helps you to be the best that you could possibly be. Also, it's given you a ton of peace and I feel like people are looking and the people that are looking, your rivals, right? Are feeling confused they're feeling hurt i feel like some of them are feeling critical and that's to be expected i also feel like you're aware that that is to be expected now pile number three i also am hearing and seeing in my mind's eye that your rivals are possessed by demons and i know this is like a wild accusation right but if you're in the spiritual realm you know that this can easily happen it can happen through People inviting substances into their life and allowing that to overtake them through obsession, through drinking, through smoking, whatever other vices. If you're not careful, if you're not protected, these things can actually overcome. And if you're in a negative mindset, well, bada beam, bada boom, there you go. That's what you got. Pile number three, I feel like these people are really focused on you and they're becoming aware not only of your magic, but how easily things happen and unfold for you. At least that's the, the their perception, right? It's all about your villain era. Things come easy to you. You're the villain in the story because things come too easy for you. You don't struggle the way I do. Um, everything always works out for you. How come it has to be that way? How come you have peace when I'm over here toiling and struggling and pulling my hair out, right? Things are just too easy for you. And I feel, pile number three, that that is nothing further from the truth. I feel like you are definitely a healer, a light worker. I think that you care about people's souls and that you um, could be somebody who is into prayer, meditation, healing, healing arts, exploring. Um, also, the chakra system art therapy, whatever it takes. I feel like you've done a lot of that and you continue to be creative and express yourself in those manners. And in a way, I feel like even your words can heal the world. And this is what's shocking about it. And I feel like you too are shocked by your power and that your villain era is actually a bomb to the soul for other people. Okay. It's making people uncomfortable. Who is uncomfortable? Hmm. Your rivals, that's right. And there's a reason for that. I feel like you don't deliberately set out to make people feel uncomfortable or unhappy, but simply by being you and following your direction and your path, you've made people uncomfortable. You've tr triggered um, a seed of doubt in their own lives or a seed of alarm 
or something to, that is designed to create them um, to go within, right? They go within and then they too go on a journey that is simply for one, a journey within themselves to help with them on their very best trajectory as well. So you are an igniter, you are of service to spirit, and you are dearly loved. Yeah, the Eight of Swords. This, I feel like, tell me these two don't really coincide. This is probably one of my all-time favorites in this deck, this card. And I'm going to say that you get all up in your head a lot about things. You get in your head about how is this going to manifest? How is it going to work? And it always does. And the way that you express things, like, for example, I got this apartment through a friend who just said, hey, do you want it? Um, after rooming with someone that wasn't really compatible with me, vice versa. Um, when I moved out, I, I found out, you know, and I, I love them. I, I think they're very sweet, but she had a special needs daughter that actually unalived some pets and I had no idea. I was shocked and I was upset. I was very upset when I found out because I had um, my little guy and obviously I didn't want anything to happen on my pet. But anyways, I digress. So I told you that and I don't remember why. But I'm just going to say with the Eight of Swords right here, this is getting caught up in your head. Things do not come to you by magic. Things come to you because you petition spirit and it comes to you in divine timing. And that's what happened to me is my friend just said, hey, we have this apartment. Would you like it? And here, you know, you can rent it out. Boom. And it was beautiful. Um, and I'm ever so grateful. So that is simply my example. Let me know what you think of this reading. If you're liking it, do comment, share, subscribe. Also, most importantly, let me know what you'd like to hear on this channel. What you'd like to see what kind of pick of cards because I'm not really getting a good read on you guys. Let me know. Much, much love to you. Until next time, namaste.